This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The blessing that's, that, that's on Abraham, I, I, I claim that right now for me. The blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jake, Jacob, increase, all that, that's mine. I am blessed with faithful Abraham. Ah, oh, sookie, sookie, now you hear what I'm saying? I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. Abraham's blessings are mine. I'm not having to earn it. Neither am I having to be a part of his seed, but spiritually I am a part of his seed because of Jesus. So by faith, I'm blessed. Creflo Dollar Ministries presents the God of righteousness is at hand, and he's waiting on you to believe that you are the righteousness of God. It's, it's a high, it's, it's, it's a thrill that it, it can't be explained. There is an elevation, there is an upgrade, there is an advance for the people of God. For me, I mean, I'm just sitting on the edge of my chair going, I want more, I want more, I want more. continue with uh, this message. Uh, are you of the works of the law or are you of the faith? I uh, want to continue to attack performance-based Christianity. There's so many people that are in bondage thinking, I've got to do something in order for God to do something for me. I got to do something to be blessed. I got to do something to be healed. I got to do something to be delivered. And we have established a do something mentality, a demand mentality, where people who call themselves Christians are always doing something to try to get something from God. And church has become the platform where we warn people in fear that if you don't do this, then God won't do that. Well, if you don't perform this way, then God's not going to perform back to you. And if you don't do good, that God's not going to be good to you. And ladies and gentlemen, that's not correct. And it's, it's putting a lot of Christian people in bondage. And so what happens is when you're not doing what, uh, what you think is necessary to be blessed, condemnation comes in. Shame comes in, and you find yourself condemned because you think, well, I'm not pleasing to God, and, 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 and if I'm not pleasing Him, then that's why this didn't happen, or that's why I didn't get this job, or that's, that's just incorrect. And so what's happening is when you are of faith, what you're saying is, I believe that Jesus has finished the work, and now I release my faith to appropriate and take possession over what's already been done. Spiritual warfare is not putting the devil in a headlock and, you know, you know, slamming him like they do in, in, in the wrestling arena. Spiritual warfare is, you know, you, you remember the Scripture says that we, we have a, a, a fellowship in his sufferings. That doesn't mean we suffer the way he suffered. He has a part of the fellowship of suffering where he got whipped with a cat of nine tails. Uh, he, he got nailed to the cross. He suffered, bled, and died, went to hell to obtain the victory for us. That was Jesus' part. We don't have the same part. Our part of the fellowship of suffering is to maintain the victory that he died and suffered to obtain. So what happens is spiritual warfare works like this. Spiritual warfare says, I receive what Jesus has done. I receive the victory that Jesus has given me. I receive that I'm healed. I receive that I'm delivered. I receive that I'm prosperous. Now, my part of the fellowship of his sufferings is to hold on to what Jesus died to get. He died to get the victory. My job is to maintain the victory. And so you don't start off in defeat. You don't start off in sickness, and you don't start off in poverty. You start off in faith 
that you are healed, that you are delivered, and that you are prosperous. You hold on to that. Now, the devil is now going to try to take victory from you. So you're not the sick trying to get well. You're the well protecting your healing from the sickness and disease that's trying to take what you already got. You're not the defeated trying to get victory. You are in victory, maintaining your victory from the defeat that's trying to take what you already have. I'm asking you to change your tense. It's not trying to get it. Jesus has gotten it. Your job is a hold to it, and by faith you are it, even though you can't see it, touch it, or maybe even feel that it's there. You are healed when? When are you healed? Right now. You're delivered when? Right now. Your property is when? Now. So now, the key to the life is by faith, I keep that. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Our faith in what? In what Jesus has already gotten. So right now, you walk out of here today victorious. You're not in here to get victory. Jesus got the victory. You're in here believing the victory, holding on to the victory. You're in here to get some encouragement to stay in victory. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what hell you've gone through this week, but I'm here to encourage you, stay in victory, praise God. Went to the doctor, the doctor said, oh, I see a bump. Stay in victory, praise God. And eventually you'll open your mouth up and say, devil, I don't know what you're trying to do, but I need to remind you, I am the healed. You might have been able to fool a lot of people, but you're not going to fool me. I already got the victory. I don't have to sweat to try to get who I already am and what I already got. And sometimes the redeemed of the Lord just got to open your mouth up and say so, praise the Lord. But now what are you saying? You're saying what you believe. You're saying what you believe. You're not trying to say it to get it to happen. You're saying it because it's already happened. You're not trying to say it to make something manifest. You believe you receive the manifestation. And you're not moved by what you see. And you're not moved by what you feel. And you're not moved by the report of the doctor, or what's on the news, or the narratives of the world, praise God. You are moved by what Jesus has already made happen for you, and you celebrate his blood, and you celebrate his broken body, and you wake up victorious, you go to bed victorious, and even in the midst of a seemingly complicated situation, what comes out of your mouth is the victory that Jesus has already obtained for you. Somebody shout amen, somebody, praise God. I'm telling you, we can go home and have Kool-Aid right now, doggone it. <laughs> Amen. But now the body of Christ has developed a demand mentality. All we find ourselves doing is coming up with religious activity to try to satisfy what Jesus has satisfied. Does that make sense? Trying to get what Jesus got. Where we are today, we are people of faith, and therefore we extend our faith to what we already believe it's done. If not, you're going to find yourself sweating like sinners trying to get what's already yours. It'll be a repeat of the Garden of Eden. You'll eat the tree trying to become who you already are. And you'll continue to try to do something to try to get what Jesus has already done. So religion has been reduced to, let me do something to try to get what's already mine. And what I'm trying to say to you this morning is, you don't have to get what's already yours. By pure fact that you believe in Jesus, you are now the recipient of all of the finished works of Jesus Christ. So by faith, claim it. By faith, possess it. By faith, dare to open your mouth and to express what you believe. Confession in a court of law is admitting something, amen? Admit that you're already healed. Admit that you're already delivered. Admit that you're already prosperous and you ain't even got two pennies to rub together. And I double dog dare you to admit that what Jesus has done has prospered you. It is not, it is not the appearance 
of a whole lot of money that lets you know you're prosperous because you know prosperity is more than just money. It includes money, but it's not just money. Don't get it mixed up. It includes money, but it's not just money. And you need to start admitting I am prosperous right now. Amen. There are certain things you need to start admitting to yourself right now. I admit that even though the doctor says I'm sick, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I admit that I already have victory even when they told me I was going to be defeated. I admit that I am a success right now, R-A-T, today. I admit it. I double-dog dare you to start admitting what Jesus has already made you. Oh, I feel like preaching right now. You, it's, time, it's time for you to open your mouth up and stand boldly before the doubters and admit what Jesus has already done. I admit I have victory. I admit I'm healed. I admit I'm delivered. I admit I'm prosperous. I admit I'm sound. I admit I'm happy. Some of you just need to admit you're happy. <laughs> Only thing the devil's trying to do is to get you to admit the opposite. And you're doing it through complaining. You're admitting that you're sad. You're admitting that you're pitiful. You're admitting that you're broke. You're admitting that, yo, oh, God, look like I'm going to die. You keep admitting the wrong thing. Amen. And in the court of Jesus Christ, you're lying. Let God be true. Amen. Amen. Let me go and preach so I can get y'all out of here, y'all. Performance-based religion is sin. And the reason why it is sin is because the only true righteousness is Christ's righteousness, and the only way to get it is to receive it and surrender all self-effort. And we're going to have to surrender all self-effort. Here's a scripture that just came to my heart, Galatians 2.16. I know I said Deuteronomy 28, but let's go to Galatians 2.16. Jesus running this thing here. I may plan out a whole bunch of stuff. I got 20 scriptures to go over. I probably ain't going to go over all them scriptures, but amen. Galatians 2.16. Look at this. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, are you of works or are you of faith? A man is not declared righteous through the working of the law. You're not justified by what you do through your self-effort, and you're not justified by your performance, your religious performance. But you're justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And so the works of the law is just simply you trying to uh, operate in the merit system. When I use the word merit system, it is, a, it is a system by which you try to do something to deserve something. All right, I'm going to make 20 confessions to deserve to be blessed. And he says, any guy that's working by the merit system of trying to perform the works of the law or try to perform the law, he says he's not going to be justified. And so too many people are being condemned because they're trying to do a performance merit-based activity to prove that they deserve something. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 9. And verse, uh, I, I, let's look at this in the message translation, verse 14 and 15. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14 and 15 uh, in the message Bible. It, it's, it's, we're constantly thinking that there's got to be a lot of effort. See, what we're not understand is the effort will come forth as a result of your faith and belief in the finished works of Jesus. The effort comes forth. The actions come forth. Even the works come forth. What to do comes forth as a result of, first of all, believing in the finished works of Jesus. Man, I saw this this morning as I was getting dressed, and I thought, wow, my first action as a Christian is to believe. That's my first, that my first, my first movement is believe, and then everything else will follow right believing. But most Christians in church, their first movement is to do something, to try to get something instead of believing what's already been gotten. So we got to rearrange it. The horse is put, the, 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 the cart is pulling the horse instead of the horse pulling the cart. And what we got to do is, I believe what Jesus has done first. 
first, I believe what Jesus has done. Say that out loud. I believe what Jesus has done first. And then what, then, then what follows that is all of the stuff that we do to try to get what's already done. And so somebody says, well, I'm going to make this confession so I can get blessed. No, uh, I believe I'm already blessed because of what Jesus has already done. Therefore, I speak. You follow what I'm saying? That becomes so important. If you can just make that small adjustment, you'll see a lot of amazing things happening in your life. Now look at this in Hebrews 9, 14. He says, think how much more the blood of Christ cleans up our whole lives Watch this, inside and out. So what Jesus did through his blood cleans, cleans our whole life up inside and out. Verse 15, watch this. Now, he says, through the Spirit, Christ offered himself as an unblemished sacrifice, freeing us from all of those dead-end efforts to make ourselves respectable so that we can live all out for God. You know, you can't live all out for God if you are still involved in those dead-end efforts to try to get what Jesus has already done. Dead-end efforts. Say this out loud. I am free, I am free. from all dead-end efforts. All dead -end efforts. That's the religious stuff that we do to try to deserve what Jesus has already done. Are y'all getting this? Because here's the deal. I'm going to keep preaching this until you get it. I'm going to keep preaching this until you get it. Uh, you come to church, what pastor preaching on? Same thing you've been preaching on for the last four months. <laughs> Say it out loud. I'm free from dead in efforts. I'm free from dead in efforts. Your efforts to try to deserve what Jesus has done for you already, instead of releasing your faith and receiving what he's already done, it's a dead end. It's a dead end. Well, I'm going to fast so I can move God. God's already moved. It's a dead-end fast. Well, I'm going to pray for 48 hours straight. I ain't going to even brush my teeth. It's a dead-end <laughs> and a real stinking activity. <laughs> it's already done. It's already done. You know, I think prayer ought to be a time where you're loving on God and worshiping and praising him for what's already done. Prayer should not be a begging session, trying to get God to do what he's already doing. You're praying to God to do what he's already done. I told you last week there's no difference than, than for me to come out here and say, sit down, and you're already seated. Sit down, you're already seated. I said, sit down. You're looking at me like something wrong with me. Heaven looking at you the same way. You're going to God praying and asking him to do what's already done, and now in this generation it requires faith to take possession of what's finished. Say out loud, it is finished. It is finished. Therefore, Therefore, I am free, I am free from all of those dead in efforts. efforts. And that's powerful. That's, I, I could stop right now and just tell you, go home and do just what I just said. And you will, you will notice all of the things that you have implemented in your Christian life and ask yourself a question, why am I doing this? And if you're honest, you're doing it to try to qualify or to try to get God to bless you. And here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the ticker to this. That's probably more doubt than anything. You're doubting that it's already done, so now you're trying to do something to get done what's already done. I got to get that in the, in the minds of Christian people. It's finished. Either it is finished or not. When he said it is finished, either that's the truth or not. Because if it's finished, then what you look like trying to finish something, he said it's finished. And what an insult to God for you to think that you can be more godly through your discipline and self-effort by yourself. Trying to, again, trying to be like God, without God, knowing the difference between good and evil, trying yourself to be, trying your best to be good and failing every time, ending up in condemnation, shame, and guilt because you just won't simply receive what's already done. I just can't see God doing something for me without me doing something to earn it. I tell you what, that's why it's going to be a dead-end effort trying your best to do something to get God to do what he's already done. God is good. 
You remember when he said to the rich young ruler, he said, good master, and he says, there's none good but God. Amen. Boy, that's a powerful statement right there. There is none good but God. So if you're going to walk in goodness, you got to walk with God. Because there ain't nobody else good but God. Jesus said that. Jesus said, ain't none good but God. And see, you're trying to be good without God, which means you ain't going to be good because God is good. And you know what? He's good without you being good. Boy, that's good preaching right there, boy. Hot diggity dog. All right, so Deuteronomy, you, you know Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 talks about the fact that it's, it's an agreement. Go, go, go to Deuteronomy. Under the law, are you of the law or are you of faith? All right, originally we see in Deuteronomy 28 this deal. He says, and it shall come to pass if thou, that's the condition, if you shall hearken, that's to hear and to do, diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, if you uh, observe and do all 613 of the commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And he says, and all these blessings shall come on thee. So this is where it came from. This is an agreement with Jewish people in that dispensation that said you have to meet the conditions to be blessed. So because the word hadn't been rightly divided, most of the church is still under a conditional agreement. The agreement says if you can keep all of these commandments, then you'll get blessed. And that's what the church is, that's where we got it from. But we don't understand we've moved from the dispensation of the law to the dispensation of grace, which is by faith. And the dispensation of grace, which is by faith, just simply says, receive by faith what Jesus has done. Under the law, it's about what you have to do. Under grace, it's about what Jesus has already done, and then you have faith in it. So if you don't rightly divide the word, you will preach in the pulpit, because I believe the problems in the congregation is a reflection of the problem in the pulpit. And what will happen is you'll continue to preach this, and people will think, oh, you got to do this to get blessed. And isn't that the truth? Look at, look at, look at Big Mama and them churches. Look at where you came from. Look at where I came from. And we're in this compulsive Christianity disorder trying our best to please God because we're convinced you have to do something in order to get something. And God's like, that was true under the old agreement. You are now under grace. You are now under grace, and grace is of faith. Grace is of faith. The law is of works. Grace is about believing. The law is about doing and working. Does everybody, if you understand this, say amen. amen. All right, all right, I can go on, all right. All right, Galatians chapter 3, verses 9 through 14. Oh, praise God. So then. They which be of faith, let's go ahead and release our faith in that. Say, I am of faith. I am, of faith. I am not of works. I am not of works. All right, so they that be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. All of the blessings that God promised to Abraham are mine now. So I, I, I can release my faith for the blessing. The blessing that's, that, that's on Abraham, I, I, I claim that right now for me. The blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jake, Jacob, increase, all that, that's mine. I am blessed with faithful Abraham. Ah, oh, sookie, sookie, now you hear what I'm saying? I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. Abraham's blessings are mine. I'm not having to earn it. Neither am I having to be a part of his seed, but spiritually I am a part of his seed because of Jesus. So by faith, I'm blessed. I'm blessed by faith. Say it. Say I'm blessed by faith. Now, that, 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 you, don't say, you don't believe you're blessed because you see it. You believe you're blessed because God said it. Now, you say it. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You need to make that a part of, of you, do you really believe you're blessed? Yes. If you really believe you're blessed, that ought to be coming out of you every day. And I'm not, I'm not talking about by force. When you believe you're blessed, it just flows out of you. 
To see the manifestations of what God has promised us, all we need to do is believe Him. Don't you let faith come out the field to have a rest. For as long as you are believing, and as long as you are alive, believe God. For a love gift of $45 or more, we would like to offer you the Law versus Faith five message series. You are not cursed, you are blessed. Also to help aid in building your faith, we have included the Daily Faith Confession CD. Once you have been redeemed by Christ, you've been delivered from a generational curse. I don't care what happened one generation ago, two generations ago, three generations ago, or four generations ago. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. You have moved from generational curses to generational blessings. Call or go online to order today. Calling all radical women. It's that time again to celebrate an infinite God who declares your worth. Join Pastor Taffy Dollar. We're getting over into the promises of the victory in Jesus. There's a future that is bright. There's a future that is whole. There's a future that is blessed. Dr. Dee Dee Freeman. He has given us everything necessary to fix what we don't like in life. Laura Pickett. You've not been called to be ordinary, but extraordinary. <laughs> Sarah Jakes Roberts. I came here to unleash your glory like never before. I'm not going to let no shoes get in the way because I refuse to lose. And special musical guests, Miranda Curtis, Demita Chandler, and Todd Delaney. Register today at taffydollar.org. Everything in God's kingdom works by faith. Now, I remember when Taffy and I started giving, it was a painful thing to give because we didn't have much at all financially. However, we made a decision to be givers. And one of the most uh, quoted scriptures in the Bible is John 3:16. God so loved the world that he gave. Therefore, as Christians, we give. Our giving is an expression of our love. And when you support Creflo Dollar Ministries financially, you are giving to our efforts to spread the gospel all over the world. And in addition to helping millions who are hurting and have vital physical needs, pray about what God would have you to sow at this time. And we want to thank you in advance for your support. Know that seeds sown into Creflo Dollar Ministries are sown into good ground that produces a mighty harvest. Your financial contributions help us cover the earth with the gospel of grace. To make a donation today, call in or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. Thank you and God bless you. Your generosity allows us to make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.